so hello everyone welcome back on another video on digital signal processing in this video we are going to learn about a serial communication interface for c2000 microcontroller so this series will be divided into three parts the first part is the basics of serial communication interface the second part we will be looking for register set that is used for programming the serial communication interface and third part we will be looking the implementation of serial communication interface using core computer studio for c2000 microcontroller so if you haven't subscribed my channel please go and subscribe the channel So the objective for this video is to make familiar with the serial communication interface and UART. So when you are familiar with serial communication interface, you will be able to connect two devices or more devices for the serial communications. You will able to know the data format and data transfer rate and serial communication interface multiprocessor communications. So the first we will look at what is the serial communication interface. So a serial communication interface is a serial input output port that permits asynchronous communications between the F2833X and other peripheral devices. And it is usually known as UART Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter and commonly used according to RS232 standards. So initialization of serial communication interface is done. So how to initialize the serial communication interface? So the serial communication interface receiver and transmitter each have a 16 deep FIFO for reducing service overhead with each with its own separate enable and interrupt bits. Both can be operated independently for half duplex communication or simultaneously for full duplex communications. To maintain data integrity, the SCI checks receive data for break detection, parity overrun, and framing errors. The bit rate is programmable for different communication speeds through a 16 bit board select register. So, this slide shows the serial communication interface pin connections for full duplex. In the full duplex mode, as you can see here, the SCI of transmit pin of device 1 is connected to the receiving pin of the device 2 and in the receiving pin of the device 1 is connected to transmit pin of the device 2. So it is a full duplex connections for the serial communication interface. So next, what will be the serial communication interface data format so first we will know about the data what is the data so the basic unit of data is called as character and that is one bit to eight bit in length so this is the data that is eight bit in the length so when we are adding when we are adding something starting and the end of this data so that is known as a frame so each character of the data is formatted as the start bit so when we are adding the start bit to the data so the each character of data is formatted as start bit and one two two one or two stop bits optional parity bit so there will be one optional parity bit and address optional address and data bit so there will be address and data bit that will be optional so this completely uh, data along with start, stop bits, parity, address bit known as a frame. And when such frames are organized in the group that are called as blocks. If more than, if two or more serial ports exist on the SCI bus, a block of data is usually begin with the address frame, which specifies the destination port of the data. So this is a completely uh, one frame so when you are having if 
two or more serial port exist on the SCI bus so the block of data will be start with begin with a address frame so this will be the address frame where this will be the address and this will be the address bit will be one and the this bit will be present only on address bit mode so there will be two modes that we will be discussing in the next upcoming slides of this video so the start bit is the low bit at the beginning of the each block each frame and which decide this frame has been started so the SCI use the NRZ, NRZ node return 0 format which means that in an inactive state the SCI receiving and transmitting pin will be high so the data format for C2000 microcontroller can be implemented with communication control register and that can be written as SCI X register dot SCI CCR equals to so that will be the communication control register and 16 this will be the 16 bit and where upper 8 bit will be reserved so this is the lower 8 bit where 7 bit will be the stop bits 6 bit will be the even odd parity 5th bit will be the parity enable 4th bit will be the loopback enable 3rd bit will be address and idle mode and 2 1 and 0 bit will be the character format so that will be uh, how much character you want to send either one character two character or up to sorry character bits so when you are giving this 0 0 0 that means you are sending the 0 bit when you are giving 1 1 1 that means you are um, assigning to 8 bits character so about this we will be uh, looking uh, looking in the upcoming uh, videos how to initialize these uh, uh, register sets so what will be the timing uh, how uh, how the data can be sent so the SCI asynchronous communication format uses either single line that will be one way or two line two way communications in this mode the frame consists of the start bit 1 to 8 bits data 1 to 8 data bits optional even and odd parity bits one or two stop bits so this is the single line and this is the full line so this is known as a half duplex and this is known as a full duplex so this is the internal clock of the serial communications that is generated by the internal clock and whenever the the SCI RHD pin will be low so when it will be detecting the your serial communication has been started so that is decided by the stop uh, starting start bit so there will be eight SCI clock per data bit so so a receiver begin operation on receipt of valid start bit so a valid start bit is identified by four consecutive internals SCI clock period of zero bit and <coughs> this is shown as below so there will be four consecutive zero bits due to eight falling edge of the clock if any bit is not zero for example if any of the bit is not zero at this point then processor start over and begins looking for another start bits for the bit following the start bits so following the start bit these will be the bits the processor determines the bit value by making three consecutive samples in the middle of the bits. These samples occurs at the fourth, fifth, and sixth SCI clock period, and the bit value determines is on a majority basis. So it will taking the data of the LSB data based on the majority words, the fourth, fifth, and sixth clock will be taken as a majority word so SCI multiprocessor communications so this format allows one processor to efficiently send block of data to another processor or the same serial link there should be only one transmitter at this time in the serial line and there could be the multiple receivers then how to transfer data on multiple device from one transmitter 
so that is using by the address bit so and when the transfer is happening using with the help of address bit this address is read by all the receivers and the receiver which is having the correct address will goes to interrupt then how to set this byte and this address byte is set by the slip bit and the slip bit will be set by the SCI control register 1 dot 2 equals to 1 and they are interrupted only when address bit is rejected so when we have assigned the address bit mode so whenever address bit is detected the particular receiver will be interrupted then how to recognize address byte the processor recognizes the address byte depending upon the mode used so whether we which mode we have used either we have used ideal line mode or address bit mode so what will be the ideal line backup mode so in the ideal line mode the address or ideal mode the bit will be zero and the blocks are separated by having the longer ideal time between blocks then between frames in the block so an ideal time of 10 or more high level bits after the frame indicate the start of the new block so how it will be so this is the completely frame and it consists of this is the one block of the frame so this start point and this is the stop point this is the starting points so this idle line will be more than 10 in the idle line backup mode so whenever this idle line will be more than 10 that means the next bit will be the starting bit if it is less than 10 then what happens then the one block of frame is continuous is continue to send the data so this is the first frame within the block so this is the block and this is the first frame a start address and a stop bit so the first frame within the blocks follows idle period of 10 bits then within the block what will be this period so this period will be less than 10 bits so to transmit address method so there will be two transmit address method will be available so either we can provide the delay of 10 bits or more more or we can set the tx rec bit to automatically leave exactly 11 bits ideal so what are the steps when we are implementing this on code composite studio what steps we have we will follow we will follow the sci backups after receipt of block start signal so the block start signal will be this one after ideal 10 bit period so this will be the start period and the processor recognize the next SCI interrupts so one interrupt happens the interrupt service routine compares the received address that is sent by the receive remote transmitter to its own if CPU is being addressed the service routine clears the slip bits and receive the rest of the data block if the CPU is not addressed the slip bit remains sets this led the CPU to continue the execution of continue to execute its main program without being interrupted by SCI port until the next detection of the block start then how to send the block start signal so in the block start signal the deliberately leave an ideal time of 10 bits or more by delaying the time between the transmission of the last data frame so this is the last data frame and this is the start frame if the time between these two frame is more than 10 bits then the block start signal will be activated then SCI port first set the TX web, TX spec bit before writing to the SCI TX buffer register and when we are writing TX backup bit this will exactly make the time of 11 bits idle time of 11 bits so in address bit backup mode what happens so that we have talked about the ideal line mode so what what included in the X address bit backup mode so this is the frame completely frame so you can see that in address bit mode there will be 
frame of the data so this is the completely frame one block of frame and uh, you can see that there will be start address and there will be extra bit you can see either it will be 0 and 1 so there will be idle period and length there, there will be no significance of this idle period in the address bit, address bit mode because each frame consists of each frame consists of the one extra bit before each top bit and that will define the whether we have used the address bit wake up mode or not so in address bit mode the address bit protocol the address or idle mode bit equal will be one frame have an extra bit called the address bit that immediately follow the last data bit the address bit is set to one in the first frame of the block and zero in other frame so this is the first frame of the block where we are making it one and other bit it will be always zero receiver wake up when address bit detected so whenever address bit is detected receiver will be wake up and automatically setting the address data bit in the frame by setting tx wake equals to 1 prior to writing address to sca buff buffer so the summary of this video is that for the sci generally two pins external pins are using for for any kind of microcontroller one will be the transmit pin one will be the receiver pin and transmit pin will be the output pin and receiver pin will be the input pin and both pin can be used as a gpio if not used for the serial communication interface so for c2000 microcontroller all the pins can be used as a gpio pins but if you are not using and some of the pin can be used for the sci pins if not if you are not using the sci pins then that can be used as a gpio pins and the board rate of can be programmable with the 64k different rates and data word format is will be the one start bit and one to eight bit the data length optional even and old parity bits one or two stop bits and extra bits that distinguish the address from the data and that will be using in the address bit mode only and there will be four error detection flags that is a parity overrun framing and break detection and two wake up multiprocessor processor mode that will be idle line and address bit mode so generally we use the idle line mode for sci uh, address bit mode is not being used not widely used so the operation will be half duplex and full duplex depending upon the modes either you want to use your sci as the transmit the data or you want to receive the data or you want to transmit or receiving the data so you can use as a half duplex or you can use as a full duplex mode double buffer received or transmit function then transmit and receiver operation can be accomplished through interrupt driven or pulled algorithm with a status flag so there is two way you can transmit and receive the receive the operations and that can be done with the help of interrupt and you can be you can use the pulled algorithm so in the pulled algorithm you can write you can completely writing you can, you are completely reading the status bit and in the while and whenever it will see the whenever the status of, of the SCI will change you are able to write the data from the rx buffer and it will be having non return zero formats and also it is having the 16 level transmit receive people so in the next video we will be looking uh, sci register set and uh, these are the some of the registers they the sci ccr communication control register control register f1 these boards these two registers will be selecting the board right and this is the control register 2 status registers emulation data buffer register receive data buffer transmit data buffer v4 transmit v4 receive v4 control and parity control registers so about these registers and how to initialize these registers we will be looking in the next lecture so thank you and don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel thank you